What's up everybody, it's your boy Ryan, and this is another quick nootropics clip. Every shred of information we put out on this channel is brought to you by a couple products. Number one, we have a stack, it is called Cortex. Strong nootropic stack. Right now, 28 bucks if you use the coupon code 5, F-I-V-E. Focus, motivation, verbal fluency, powerful brain energy, powerful mood. Buy that at livecortex.com. If you need my help personally on anything related to nootropics, we have a consulting service that is a 40-minute call with me, 15 follow-up email correspondences where we do custom stack formulation for you. And if you're new, new to nootropics, you got two products, Smarter, Better, Faster, digital book that I wrote for people that are new, teach you everything, or the nootropic starter pack, which is Smarter, Better, Faster, plus a bottle of our stack, Cortex. Get all that stuff at livecortex.com. Okay, so uh, oftentimes in people that we consult with, we run into the issue where they're not necessarily trying to take nootropics to boost their performance right now. They're not like, you know, regular folks who really don't have any sort of neurological signaling issues and just want to perform better at work. There are people in some cases that uh, have some degree of damage to receptor functionality or signaling of a particular neurotransmitter or neurotransmitters. And in those cases, uh, it's a little harder than band-aiding it with a nootropic that's going to kind of just make them feel productive for the time. I mean, those things are necessary. So bringing in a uridine stack or a new pep stack or even modafinil is like an infamous band-aid for a lot of issues that you know might need some receptor regulation work, okay? Uh, in such cases, uh, what usually has to happen, and what, what usually is has gone wrong is either serotonin signaling or GABA signaling. That, that's basically the case every time. And <clears throat> the major point I wanna make in these situations is that instead of taking nootropics as band-aids just to feel better, you actually have to work on the receptor sites and upregulating those receptor sites or fixing the production of a particular neurotransmitter or another and or trying to identify where downstream in the process of a neurotransmitter sending or of a neuron sending a neurotransmitter, that neurotransmitter being received and the postsynaptic neuron uh, activating and then you know your, your brain kind of getting the response from that neurotransmitter. You, you have to find during that you know process where exactly is wrong. And I know that's difficult because you don't have uh, scans that look directly in your brain and can measure this stuff and can look at it. So we can really kind of go on conjecture and theory and experimentation and trying things. And in the end, when something works, then you know what you did to fix it. And you know, then you actually know what the problem is. You can't figure out the problem before you have to figure it out after you fix it. Two quick examples, GABA and serotonin. Um, <clears throat> if you don't have enough GABA floating around in your brain, either being produced or GABA receptors are so used to maybe synthetic GABA, like benzos or alcohol, then it becomes really difficult for your brain to manufacture that whole th GABA, the, the cascade of things that has to do with GABA signaling after that. Because your receptors, your GABA receptors are just super used to like a synthetic, synthetic GABA as an example. The same is true for uh, serotonin. If you've taken an SSRI for a long time and all you've been doing is kind of inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin and thus keeping some serotonin, but I mean, it's, it's my position that it's sort of endogenously shutting down the ability for the brain to produce serotonin by itself, which probably to some extent was impaired before you went on the SSRI. And that's why you went on the SSRI because you had symptoms related to that. The only way to fix those situations is to be, if you're talking about nootropics, or things that work on those chemicals is to actually do heavy, heavy research to figure out, even outside of the realm of nootropics, but some inside of the realm of nootropics, which things will upregulate those neurotransmitter receptor sites. So making it very clear with the examples of GABA and serotonin, uh, what I am finding, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's a new, I guess kind of a new thing of experimentation for me and something that I'm, I'm working on, uh, is for serotonin, as an example, a lot of the time with people that have some sort of serotonin syndrome or PSSD, like genital numbness or sexual dysfunction from SSRIs and the inability to feel anything kind of generally after SSRIs is basically the 5-HT1A receptor is needs to be upregulated. It needs to work correctly and it needs to work in conjunction with the hypothalamus to send signals throughout the entire nervous system. Um, and the way that in a preliminary way, uh, I have to solve those issues, serotonin-based issues, is a compound called ciproheptadine. Now, I'm not entirely sure yet, but it does look very promising. Uh, I'm in communication with people 
that are having issues that are related to serotonin and ciproheptadine is helping them substantially. I think you can get it from Ideal Labs, ideallabs.com, something like that. Uh, ciproheptadine is the name of that compound. You're, you're, you're basically working on upregulating and re and restarting the engine of serotonin subtype receptor 5-HT1A. That's critically important. That's why in a lot of these cases people take L-theanine when they have depression and or post SSRI or something, and it really doesn't do the trick. It's because you gotta upregulate that receptor, get that working again. For GABA, it's a lot easier. For GABA, it's supplying the brain with either a GABA derivative, but not as strong as benzodiazepine, something like oxyracetam, which is actually a cyclic GABA derivative. And so gets the brain kind of thinking there's GABA going on, gets that GABA feeling back, some inhibitory stuff, some feel good stuff. But the other option is facoracetam, which upregulates GABA B receptors. And that's one of the things you have to do in this case. So it's about fixing the receptors. Uh, so in cases where you've got problems related to GABA signaling and related to serotonin signaling, I just wanna make the point that it actually has to be a very surgical approach of, approach of fixing the problem, which is upregulating the receptors and then trying to fix the signaling. And for serotonin right now, my best bet would be ciproheptadine. It's a liquid solution, 5-HT1, a, uh, a modulator, or facoracetam, which is GABA B receptor modulator. Okay, I hope that makes sense. More to come on that. I know that's very general and it's kind of preliminary, but there's there's more to be developed there. I just wanted to kind of put that intro out. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Remember, every shred of information we put on this channel is brought to you by a couple products. We have a stack. It is called Cortex, strong nootropic stack. If you want focus, motivation, verbal fluency, powerful mood, if you didn't sleep, if you slept three hours, but you need brain performance, like I did last night and need brain performance, Pick the Cortex deck. It fixes it for most folks. Uh, coupon code FIVE gets you Cortex for 28 bucks. If you need my help on any of this, we have a consulting service. 40 minute call will be 15 additional email correspondences, custom stack formulation, and helping people to figure out problems like this. If you're new to nootropics, read Smarter, Better, Faster, a digital book I wrote for you if you're new, teaches you everything, or get the nootropic starter pack, which is Smarter, Better, Faster, plus a bottle of our stack Cortex, okay? Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you next time.